Hey everybody, welcome to That's Oh Radio. Here and I do it, I do. That was a long one. This episode of That's O Radio and every episode of That's O Radio was brought to you by Volpe Martial Arts. Volpe Martial Arts is KW's hottest, newest kung fu and Hapkido school, folks. My brother, Sifu Adam, my best friend, my brother, Sifu Adam, brings you his lifelong passion, lifelong skill, lifelong just love. Love for the sport, love for the martial art, love for the community, love for people. Brings it to you six days a week. Check it out, folks. BolpeMartialArts.com. Uh, it's an amazing fusion. Hapkido, Korean style, Kung Fu, Chinese style. Brings it together. BolpeMartialArts.com. Folks, today I'm talking about cheesecake. I'm talking about pizza. I'm talking about how to get back when you have cheesecake and pizza. If cheesecake and pizza bother you, how do you get back? And how do you deal with it? And what's it like? What does it do for me as well? Um, if cheesecake and pizza don't, doesn't bother you, well then darn you. Just kidding. You're lucky. You're very lucky if Cheesecake and Pizza doesn't bother you. Um, thanks for listening, folks. Thanks for your subscribes. Thanks for your likes. Thanks for your shares. I love you all. Happy Friday. Lily's going to say her theme song. Yes, that's right. Thanks, everybody. Peace. I love you. Fatso, Fatso, the really good podcast show. Fatso, Fatso, the very, very first, first podcast, podcast show. show. Hey everybody, welcome to Fatso Radio. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? This episode of Fatso Radio and every episode of Fatso Radio is brought to you by Volpe Martial Arts. Check it out, folks, at VolpeMartialArts.com. All right, folks, today, episode number 149 and welcome, December 10th, episode number 149. And what is Fatso Radio again? If you're new, welcome to the show. If you're not new, thank you for sticking around. You're still new in my heart. Uh, Fats a radio, a podcast, a radio show, channel, whatever you want to call it, dedicated to talking about everything, mostly talking about diet, mostly talking about nutrition and if you're losing weight and how the struggles of losing weight and what happens when you don't lose weight or what happens when you're off track and how to get back on track, all around uh, high fat, high or moderate protein, low carbohydrate diet, right? Ketosis, a high fat diet is a ketosis, is a ketogenic diet. Basically, remind everybody, to remind myself, I have to remind myself sometimes, when you eat higher fat than carbohydrates, your body prefers that, and your body per- primarily burns fat for fuel. It's a much cleaner fuel. It's a much better fuel. You'll feel better, and it'll also lose weight. If you do it, it takes a while to learn. It takes a while to get it right. Nobody's perfect. I'm not, certainly not perfect, and I struggle all the time. Tonight's episode is dedicated specifically around the struggles, and th- that life happens, Pizza and cheesecake, folks. I have to complain. I have to cry. I have to confess. I have to pray for strength on pizza and cheesecake. What well, I like pizza. I don't eat it very often at all. In fact, now that I don't eat it very often at all, uh, and I stopped eating it because it really helped me lose weight. And I stopped eating cheesecake for the most part because it really stopped eating me. It stopped uh, helping me. It, st- it, it hindered my weight loss when I ate it. Let's just put it that way. But I ate cheesecake the other day and I ate pizza the other day, folks. And I have to say, I'm not asking for pity. I'm not asking for, I'm not asking you for, to feel sorry for me. But I am trying to explain that for me, let me explain what it does to me. Oh my God. Pizza, especially crappy pizza, but not crappy pizza. I had good pizza the other day. It was great. Tasted great. It was hard on me, right? But how is it hard on me? Because it, it's, you know, it's not like I didn't, it's not like I either gained weight overnight or it's not like I didn't lose weight overnight. I definitely didn't lose weight in the condition I was after eating pizza and cheesecake, but that's not the idea. And that's not what bothered me. It's just how I feel when I eat it. So pizza, like most breads, unless it's like a sourdough made from my sister, Mariana, love you, Mare. Um, most breads, especially pizza, I don't know why. It just, it's maybe the amount of yeast in it. I don't know, but it bothers me. It makes me feel really bloated. And it just, it just kind of, not only does it make me feel bloated, but the next day, and these are the effects like I, I've noticed and I've learned and I've kind of observed, observed over the years now of, of trying this and, and having it and not having it and having a high fat diet, but once in a while, trying to have pizza to see what it's like, to see if you can to see if I could personally reintegrate it. And if I could, how often and how much. So, you know, at first I was like, no pizza forever. Okay, well, is that possible? Yeah, it's possible. Is it 
probable no because life happens and nobody's perfect and i can't even sure i can strive strive for perfection but i'm never going to attain it so in reality is the reality is that i'm going to have these foods that i that aren't considered my ideal foods i'm going to have them once in a while because they're around they're abundant and they they taste good and they're part of our culture part of our habits part of our social interactions so pizza what does it do to me aside from the way i feel really full and really bloated when i eat it that same day or that that night in this case, it was at night, but it's how I feel the next day. It's, I can't say exactly how it happens. And I definitely don't know that it's like I said, I don't know the mechanism of action. I don't know how it happens exactly, but I can tell you when I eat bread and pizza specifically, I don't know, but most breads the next day, I feel it in my joints. I feel it in like my foot and this weird feeling on the bottom of my foot where I don't normally feel anything. All of a sudden you feel like a little just a little bit of a sore spot or you feel like a little bit of an arthritis kind of a feeling like tight joints where they weren't tight yesterday or for me i notice it two or three days later i really do where um if i do hard work that day and my job now is very physical right? i'm making salami so it's very physical and now i've noticed even when i was when i was delivering mail as a mailman as a postie i think the politically correct shut up politically politically correct i was a mailman uh technically still working for Canada Post, but not workly, working, technically still employed. Anyway, uh, it was very physical as well, right? So I found that like, if I had a hip issue in the past, which I had a minor hip issue, if I had a knee issue in the past, which I had a knee issue, if I had a shoulder issue, if I had an elbow issue or whatever, you know, they would flare up and they would, I would feel it the day after I ate bread or the day after I ate pizza. And I just, it still happens. So maybe it's the amount I ate. I don't know. And I've always kind of debated what, what it is. And I, one of these days I'll, I'll do some sort of testing maybe, but I just know that if I have aches and pains or anything that even was a previous ache and pain, ache or pain, it pops up and it and creeps up and it flares up essentially when I have, um, when I have pizza or when I have bread, most bread. Right. And the other thing, okay, this is going to be a short episode folks, but the other thing that affects me just like pizza is cheesecake. And I probably love cheesecake even more than I love pizza, which is pretty hard because I, I love pizza, right? Like who doesn't love fresh, hot, crunchy pizza, but doughy in the middle and oh, amazing. Cheesecake, folks. I'm not sure what it is about the cheesecake. It's not the sugar just per se, because I've had sugar other times and I have sugar other times and doesn't do anything what cheesecake does to me. I think it might be the che cream cheese in cheesecake. Um, but I love cheesecake. It's, it, I, one would say that it loves me, but it doesn't love me. It doesn't love me at all. It hates me. It just destroys my body, <laughs> but I love cheesecake and oh, I'm going to sneeze. Maybe not. I love cheesecake and, but the same thing sort of, but okay. well, that was a sneeze, but I'm okay. I love cheesecake. I love it so much. I love any kind of cheesecake, any kind of berry, any kind of fruit, any kind of chocolate, any kind of caramel. You make cheesecake, I like it. So the cream cheese just destroys me. But it's not the same way that bread does. <laughs> it's the way that dairy destroys some people. It either gives people the runs or it gives people the cement path. I'm not sure how you want to put that a nicer way. But for me, it just kind of like, it, it slows, let's just say it slows down transition. It slows down the flow, slows down everything. Everything's moving normal for me normally, right? regularly it's pretty normal especially when i'm when i'm going carnivore it's like boom clockwork once a day bing bang it's awesome but with cheesecake just crushes me just crushes me and and i feel for the next day and i feel for sometimes two days later but the thing is it's like is it worth it and i still don't know i've been contemplating this for on the show for 149 episodes I've been contemplating this every week. I've been contemplating this every day for the last five or six years or however, more than that. For my whole life, I've been contemplating what's the risk or not the risk, sorry. Is it worth it? Is it worth the diet? When I was a kid I, or when I was even just younger, I never thought any diet was worth it. I never thought any, any regimen, any, any plan, any schedule, anything. I just never thought it was worth it because I, quite honestly, I was ridiculously stupid, right? And I was stupid enough to... Uh, or too stupid to rather to realize that, you know, the investment of the hard work and, and the investment of willpower, you know, in, in, in 
however long you can do it, we'll have payouts and we'll have big payouts. And, and the, the bigger risk you take or the bigger, I guess the bigger commitment and the bigger sacrifice you make, oftentimes the payout is that much bigger. And I've realized, and I've learned for me, at least again, I'm not a doctor, right? So I'm not giving medical advice, but I just kind of how diets work and how nutrition works and how some, if something works for you, how that works, <laughs> I guess. And if you stick with it, right. The benefit of sticking with something is that when I stay away from the stuff, I feel great. And I feel, and not only do I just feel great as far as, you know, I'm not bloated if I'm not eating bread or if I don't have, you know, constipation, if I eat cheesecake or, or my aches and aches and pains, you know, I don't not like those are huge things, right? Those aren't just, they're not for me, at least they're not just things that, um, there are things I want to live with. They really aren't. And, and when I, and because now I, I can kind of pinpoint or I can really associate them, correlate them at least to when this happens, I feel like this. Well, if that's the case, and if I, when I don't do this, this doesn't happen. Or when I don't eat this stuff, I don't feel this way. It's pretty, it's pretty, uh, I mean, yeah, it's anecdotal, but it's, 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 it's pretty good evidence for me. It's pretty good everyday evidence. If I don't eat this, I feel this way. If I do eat this, I feel this way. It's pretty cut and dry for me. So I'm going to do what I'm going to do, right? I'm going to do what works for me. I'm going to do what, 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 not just I think works for me, but actually works. And you, you know, because we're not scientists, just because we're not scientists doesn't mean that we're not having little scientific experiments. Doesn't mean we're not doing things in a proper logical way and we can see patterns and we can see progression. And that's kind of what I'm doing. And that's what you should be doing as well. Testing with yourself, not testing, but experimenting. Taking these little experiments for a week and do this or for 30 days and do this. Like I often talk about 30 days needed to really cut, cut a lot of habits. 60 days if you can do it. 90 days if you can do it. Break an addiction to sugar if you have it. The addiction to sugar, I have, my addiction to sugar is strong. It's strong. It's, 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 I don't know if it's sugar specifically, like a simple sugar or if it's just carbohydrates in general, because I'm, I fall victim to every carbohydrate. Every carbohydrate is attractive to me. Every carbohydrate is something that I have a difficult time maintaining, right? Or I mean, moderately consuming, I guess. Um, but it doesn't mean that I'm never going to have it again. Just like, I'm going to drink alcohol again. And I'm probably going to have a cigarette again before I die. I'm probably going to have more marijuana. I'm probably going to have like a bunch of things that I'm not supposed to have, or I may not. Right. But it's not just about being completely perfect, but it's about stringing those days of really good progress or really good actions together and then seeing benefits from it. And if you can kind of do it 90% of the time and whenever you kind of sway or whenever you, you kind of, you know, don't, well then you, it's easy to, it's, I guess it's more responsible or it's easier to kind of accept the responsibility if you kind of know what's going to happen. And I do now. I mean, I still kick myself in the ass for eating pizza, for eating three pieces of pizza when, um, when I don't need to eat any of it, quite honestly, right? Whether I ate before or whether I can eat after, whether I can eat a piece of meat or something that doesn't, that doesn't mess with me, why don't I? It's life. There's no answer. There's only answer other than I'm human and I'm, and I can only try the best that I can. There have been times, there's been weeks and months and like six months, you know, where I was stuck super, super strict and, and you get amazing results. You get amazing results when you do that. So if you do that for a certain amount of time, I mean, there's all different purposes, right? You, you can use this diet in certain, many different ways. You can do it forever for the rest of your life and have something once in a while. Maybe it's not optimal. Maybe it's not going to hurt you. Maybe you're not someone who's super, super um, susceptible to, to bread like I am or cheesecake like I am. But anyway, this is just a short episode on what that does to me. But I also want to talk about how to get back to it, right? How do I recover from a bad cheesecake and pizza night? This may not be popular. But the best thing to do, in my opinion, it also may be a little bit hard. And if you're diabetic, I wouldn't do this. But if you're not diabetic, uh, I would fast the next day. I would, the reason why I wouldn't fast the next day if you're diabetic, of course, is because you're more susceptible to blood sugar swings anyway. I wouldn't suggest that. Again, I'm not giving you medical advice. Talk to your doctor. But if you are going to do it, please don't be diabetic. It's just, it's just not smart to do that if you're diabetic. Um, if you're diabetic, uh, I would probably eat uh, less sugar the next day and kind of move yourself back down again, maybe a couple of days or what, whatever you know how to do it with yourself if you've done this already. But if you're not and you have no problem with uh, blood sugar regulation and, you could, and you've done fasting before, I definitely would suggest to fast. 
it's in my opinion, it's the best way to just do a reset and your body's like, okay, I got rid of that shit, literally and figuratively. And let's start again <clears throat> and let's start again. So that's what I want to close on. Life happens. You're going to have that party. You're going to see your parents, your grandparents, your aunts, your uncles, a Christmas party, a birthday party, whatever it is. You're going to have food or you're going to be at least tempted. And that food is going to be presented to you. It's going to be offered to you. If you eat it, so be it. If it doesn't hurt you, great. If it does hurt you, your life, it's life. It's your life. You've done things in the past that's hurt you. If you know about it, if you know about it, that's the key. Once you know about it, then you can do better, right? If you know better, then you do better. I think Oprah says that. I don't know. I'll steal it. I'll borrow it tonight. Folks, thanks for listening to Fatso Radio. Thanks, everybody, for watching Fatso Radio. Thanks for your likes. Thanks for your subscribes. Thanks for the shares. Uh, just, just the love in general. I think I'm getting this, this hat. <laughs> One of the kids' hats. I'm getting. I'm going to put it on my head there. There you go. Fatso Radio. This should be like our little, our little mascot. Anyway, I don't know what that is. Doesn't matter. That's a reader, everybody. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for your likes, subscribes, and everything. Um, I love you all. December 10th. Peace. Christmas season. Christmas season. All right, folks. Have a great night. Peace. Let's say bye to everybody. Bye. And we'll say thanks for listening. Say thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye. That's so radio, the really great podcast show. That's so radio, the really great podcast show. So get your butt and get in your chair. Don't eat your nails and don't pull your hair. We'll talk about chicken or talk about steak. We'll talk about fat for goodness sake. That's so, that's so, the really great podcast show. That's so, that's so, the very first podcast show.